Hello friends, welcome back to Viewless Academy. Today's session is a continuation of the last session where we have discussed the theory part of cloud of networking. In today's session, we are going to see how those things, the theory, whatever we learned in the last session, how we can apply that uh, in a you know in a practical way. Okay. So I have some plan for today's session. So if you look at my screen right now, we try to buy a domain name which is called vanity URL. Okay. So I, I already bought one domain name for my 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 channel itself. So mulesacademy.com. We'll try to create DLB. Okay. With this URL, we we'll try to access our applications. We'll try to access our a, a, a apps via shared load balancer. We'll try to see whether we'll be able to access our applications via public uh, mule worker URL. We'll try to see whether we'll be able to access from mule worker internal URL. If you know the public IP address, we'll try to see if we get public IP of mule worker can we can we uh, you know uh, can we able to access our mule apps by using this? So all these things we'll try to see, okay, one by one. When then we deploy application on eight zero eight one and see how we can access the you know how many ways we can access. Then we'll try to deploy application on eight zero nine one, and we'll try to access. We'll see. We'll work with the default URL mapping. Then we'll try to see uh, you know uh, update that URL mapping. We'll try to update the firewall rules and uh, see the difference in the behavior. Uh, we'll try to create SSL certificates. So for our domain name, I'll try to create the wildcard certificate because I wanted to hit uh, different environments. So I'll try to see uh, hit dev test. Okay. So that's what I, I, I plan for this session. Before jumping out of the demo, uh, I'll encourage everyone to please subscribe the channel, hit the bell icon, hit the like button so that you'll get notifications to upcoming videos. Okay, let's quickly jump on to the demo part. So first thing we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll jump on to our, so our everything will be focused on runtime manager today. So let's go ahead and first see, we'll create a VPC. Okay, so to creating VPC, we need, yesterday we have discussed three things are very important. One, let's go ahead and give a name. So I will go ahead and say, we are going to focus on non-prod. So we'll say non-prod, that will be our name. Then go ahead and select the region. Whenever we're creating a VPC, make sure that you're creating a VPC in the region, which is close to your data center. So for me, I'll go ahead with VCI PC specific Sydney, okay? And then cider block, let's say uh, uh, I had a discussion with my team architects and my network team. They gave me a cider block. I gave them a size, how many IP addresses I want. And they gave me, let's say the cider block. So let's go ahead with the cider block 10.0.0 slash 22. Okay. Then we can select the environments. Let's not select environments right now. We can select later. Okay. Business group, I have only one business group. So, uh, you know, default that business group will be there. By default, we'll get four firewall rules. As, as per query, we have discussed, right? So, 8081, 8082, we'll be focusing on the, uh, you know, uh, the public access and 8091, 8092 will be focusing on only accessible within VPC. Okay. We can edit, go ahead and we can edit it. Uh, but now, right now, we'll go ahead with default setup. Internal DNS is optional. This is something I have not discussed in the theory part, but this is something, let's say, inside your data center, you have one database uh, hosted on, let's say, uh, abc.com, okay? That abc.com won't be uh, available on internet. When your VPC trying to access or any, any, any applications from your VPC trying to access that uh, a database, which is hosted on, let's say, abc.com, that won't get reach from your new applications unless you add those details over here the ip of that abc.com where the server is running and domain okay once you give that detail then only your applications will be able to connect to that uh, to that uh, uh, database okay so right now i don't have any requirement to do that so I, i'm not going to add any so let's create the vpc very important while creating domain 
uh, your region where you are creating, right? That's very important. Title block, that's very important. Okay. So it's creating our VPC. So why, you know, let, let it create. We'll go ahead and create two different environments. So we can go ahead and create in access management. So we'll go ahead in access management and let's go to the business groups. So this is my business group right now. And if you go to the environments, these are the environments. So I'll go ahead and I'll first rename this guy. So you can go ahead and say this one is my dev. Okay, update it. I go ahead and add one more environment here, which will be my sandbox. I say this will be my text. So I have two environments. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back to our runtime manager again. So my VPC is created. So let's go ahead here. Any environment, what I'll do, I'll attach dev and text to environments I've attached. Business group, you don't need, only we have default business group. Firewall rules, let's say not change anything right now. Apply these changes. So I have VPC should not be updated, not all environments. Let's see what's going wrong. So let me put one at a time. Okay, perfect. Okay. Let's go ahead and add test. Let's see. Uh, DPC could not be updated. Not all of the environments. Okay. Let's go ahead and add one more environment. Let's see. Okay, so create one environment production this time, and I'll say prod. Okay, create it. So I have two non prod, which is sandbox, right? And one production. Let's go ahead and add a test now. This time, let's see what happens. Something is wrong with this. Okay, let's move on with our dev environment. We have attached our dev environment. Let's see. Okay, so we are ready with our VPC where I have one non prod environment right now. Okay, let's go ahead and create dedicated load balancer. To create dedicated load balancer, we should have very important thing VPC. Okay, and as I mentioned, when we talked about DLB, the default license will give you two workers. So, on two workers for high availability, you can deploy your DLB. And if you want more, then you need to go ahead and buy that license. Four workers, six work maximum. We can go till eight. So we'll go with the default. Here we can change the timeout. So this timeout is nothing but from your DLB till your new worker, this should respond in 300 seconds. Okay. That's you can go ahead and change it, but we'll go ahead with default. Okay. 300. Now I was talking about whitelisting, right? So here we can add whitelisting, what CIDR block you want to allow traffic inside your VPC. So right now we'll go ahead with the default one, which is public access. Okay. Rest of the thing, we'll go ahead and we'll keep as it is. Now, without certificate and without VPC, you cannot create DLB. Okay. So let's go ahead and first create the certificate. So to create certificate, we need domain name, right? So let's go ahead and I'll show you one thing, which is so on my uh, GoDaddy, I bought the domain name called so mewsacademy.com. Okay, so this you can go to any domain name provider. There are multiple domain name providers. I selected GoDaddy and bought the one domain name. Okay, so now. To get the wildcard certificate, uh, we have multiple, uh, again, the vendors available. So you can use uh, uh, something called zero SSL. We can go ahead and add, uh, get the certificate from zero SSL. I'll add all these links over there. Uh, we can use, uh, let's encrypt. Um, we also use let's encrypt to get the 90 days uh, certificate, free certificate, okay. So these tools are available. I'll I'll go ahead and I'll so I'll create my uh, own manually. Okay, so to create that manually, 
uh, good documentation is available on on our news for documentation you can go ahead and here if you look for load balances and sell endpoints you will go ahead and you will see manually we can use a tool called open ssl okay and generate okay so while generating the ssl certificate wildcard certificate we will be generating two files one will be representing our private key and other one will be representing our public certificate okay we can go ahead with the command okay i'll show you that command and this will be self sign certificate from zero ssl and let's encrypt they will be giving us ce sign certificate this will be our self sign certificate so there are two uh, ways we can create directly we can fire the command or we can create our config file and in that config file we can mention our details okay so in in that you can give the common name which is your domain name and you can say that there are alternate names for this so for example if you want dev.example.com test.example.com prod.example.com you can mention all these things over here or we can create a wild certificate that will take care of all these subdomains dev test prod so i chose this option to create it so i have created my file okay so let me show you so i have created the file for my for my wildcard certificate and uh, uh, we will create the public certificate and private key from this file so what is the command we will be running we will be running the command this one so we will use open ssl tool okay and then request will send we will say create new key use rs algorithm with 248 um, uh, length notes key out give me the private key first okay then it will be valid for 3000 days and then give me a public certificate both will be in form format and use the config config file for this let's go ahead and copy this command open ssl you don't need to install if you have installed git you'll get open ssl by default so that's that's what i'm leveraging i have git installed i don't need to install open ssl copy this command <clears throat> Uh, start the command line from here one by one. Okay, go ahead and paste it and fire the command. Okay, if I go to my folder, I'll be getting my public certificate. If I look at this, this speaking certificate, so this will be there. <clears throat> and then the private key. If I open this, private key. Okay, so we we bought the domain name we have created a wildcard certificate and we have all the details now to create a uh, dedicated load balance let's go jump on to our dedicated load balancer <clears throat> okay so now let's give the name properly so i say external hyphen DLB okay. So, because this is uh, uh, going to face my external traffic, so I gave that name. Go ahead and select our uh, VPC, it is non prod VPC. It will be it will get deployed on two workers, timeout will be 300 seconds. And the whitelisting, I will go with the default. I want to allow the public traffic inside my VPC right now, okay. And these options are uh, are um, are uh, go with, will go with the default. So if you see inbound HTTP mode off, it won't allow HTTPS traffic, uh, HTTP traffic. Okay. If I say on, it will allow HTTP, and uh, it it say redirect. So HTTP will get redirected on HTTPS. So these three options will go with off. So we'll always use HTTPS. Enable static IPs. So you can you can give static IPs to DLB, but it won't be recommended because uh, then you need to do one um, mapping on the DNS server where you need to mention the uh, static IPs. And when you restart your uh, DLB, the static IP will get changed. So this is not recommended. Okay. URL encoding means this is something where uh, you are uh, encoded characters like you know for space you'll get percentage twenty. That will get proxied as 
as 20 at the back end without primary decoding. No decoding will happen. Okay, so that percent is 20 will be used as it is. Support TLS 1.0. So this will be from your uh, client till DLB. Okay, so if I say, if I check this box, so let's say I'm triggering a URL from Postman. So Postman till DLB, this supports TLS 1.0 if I check it. Upstream means from DLP till your mule worker. Okay. So if I said I will be forcing TLS 1.0, I'm not going, not selecting any, any option. Forward client certificate means when we implement two-way SSL. Okay. That time we need to select this option. So then we need to upload the client certificate also. If I go with this option, we need to upload the client certificate. So we are not going to upload any client certificate today. We are going to upload only server certificate, which is uh, on our DLB. Okay. So let's go ahead and add a certificate. So public key path. So I'll just go ahead with my my certificates. So we'll we have created this one, and then private key, private key. Both are in PIM format, and I'm not giving any CA certificate. And let's look at the URL mapping. Yesterday in the theory part, I was I was explaining this right. This default, we will go ahead and we'll update it. But with right now, we'll go ahead with default uh, URL mapping. Okay. Let's go ahead and say save certificate. And we'll say create load balance. Now you can see that it's coming at start mulesacademy.com. Okay. Now once we create this load balancer. We need to take the, the load balancer URL. So we look, yesterday we have discussed load balancer will get deployed on two worker and then load balancer also will get two URLs. One will be public, one and another will be private. So public URL look like name of the DLB dot LB dot any point DNS dot name. So when we bought a domain name on DNS service, we need to do one mapping. Okay, so let me show you that mapping. So take this URL, I'll, I'll just show you how the URL look like. So the URL will be ext, that is your DLB name. Then rest of the thing will be constant. So copy this URL. And we need to say, whenever I'm triggering this particular URL, my DNS server should direct, redirect all traffic to this DLB. Okay, so let's copy this. Let's uh, jump onto my, <coughs> my code ID. DNS server record and here control F, control V. If you look at this, this is the record, CNAME record we need to add. Star divert all the traffic to this particular uh, load balance. Now let's test this whether this mapping is working or not. So we have tool something called what's my DNS. Okay. So if you uh, if you uh, say let's say dave.mulesacademy.com give me whether this CNAME mapping is working or not, search for this. It will, it will show you that whether it's, it's redirecting that traffic or not. Okay. If you want to see the A record for this guy, this will show you that on which IP addresses the traffic is going. Okay. So you can see that our dedicated load balancer always deploys on two worker. Okay. That's the reason we are able to see two public app, uh, IP addresses over here. We'll see this. I'll, I'll show you via command line uh, uh, by using one utility. Okay, so we are sure that now our CNAME mapping is actually redirecting traffic. If I hit this uh, particular URL, it's getting uh, uh, redirected to this dedicated load balance. Okay, so domain name is ready, SSL certificate is ready, VPC is ready, DLB is ready. Our wildcard certificate is, you know, uh, CNA mapping is ready. Let's go ahead now and deploy our application. So I have created simple application, very, very simple applications. Um, let me show you that. So I have simple application. So we'll try to deploy this application first on, on the 8081. Let's do that and see. So let's go ahead and deploy this application on 8081. Okay. Okay, save everything okay. and say export this. This session will be a little lengthy, so please be with me. So we'll just use this one is 8081. 
Now let's go ahead to our local applications, deploy application. This time we select Cloud Hub and give a name. So we'll start with our, our whatever we have discussed in our daily, daily sessions. So we'll take app itself, we'll deploy it on one worker. So let's go ahead with one worker, we'll deploy it on point one before. This is very important. Okay. If I go with this option, right? We'll go with we'll check this also. Okay. So if I go, if I go with this default region, then this application won't get deployed under your VPC. It will get deployed in this region. Okay. So make sure that you are selecting your VPC region. So if you remember, our VPC region is HS specific Sydney. And go ahead. Select your jar file, load, let's go to jar and 8081. Okay. Deploy it. Since it will take time, what we'll do, we'll create one more application. Same application and we change the port number here. Okay, this time we'll make it 8091. Okay, save this, export this. So, I wanted to show you if the application is deployed on 8081, on 8091, how that we get access from different load balances. Okay. So finish this. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead and try to deploy one more application. App Ethel is anyways getting deployed. So let it deploy. Second one will deploy. Uh, let's go to or cloud up and select the region Sydney. Okay, and this one will deploy to worker. I'm repeating my my theory section here. So we'll say app Lucy. Okay, if you I mean if, if you're getting confused, please go back to that previous session and then come back here. Okay. So here I'm deploying this application on two worker and this application will deploy get deployed on 809. Okay. Let's do the jar file, 8091, okay, deploy. This will get deployed on 8091, okay. Now one more thing I'll deploy. Other than 8091, 8081, we'll deploy one more application, which is, let's say is running on 9000. Okay? Whether this application will be Accessible either of dead load balancer or dedicated load balancer. That also I wanted to show you quickly. So let's go ahead and now this one is 9000. Export it. Okay. So here. This already started, it's getting deployed. The third one will be deployed, which is running on all together different port. Okay, this one I will say simply app running on 9000. Okay, choose the file 9000 and everything I'll go with the default. Okay, okay let's select the region. So three applications we are deployed within our VPC. One is running on 8081, second one is running on 8091, third one is running on 9000. Okay. Okay. So 
So let's first go to our application, which is already started. Let's take this app ethel. So we are getting URL over here. This is the URL. Okay. So yesterday we have let's copy this URL and look at the template. So this will match with this template. Control V. Have a look at it. Okay. So we have given the app name. Okay. And then region is AUX1, which is our Sydney Cloud of Data. Okay. So let's go ahead and see whether we'll be able to access this application from our postman. So we'll go with one by one URL. Okay. So first URL and my endpoint is a repo path is hello only. Okay. So let's go ahead and trigger this. So it says that yes, hello from cloud of networking session. So that means we are able to access. Okay. And I want to show you on how many workers this shared load balance is running right now. Okay. So we can go ahead to our command line here and we say lookup is a utility you can use NS lookup, not only lookup. Okay, NS lookup in you just paste that URL and trigger this. Okay. Now, if you remember yesterday in the theory class, we have seen, right? This is the this is the URL is getting uh, diverted to the region dot cloud or drive, and this actually getting resolved into three IP addresses. Now, three IP addresses means it's running on three workers. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, can I can I access our shared load balancer by using this public address? The answer is no. Okay, we cannot. Okay, so let me let me mark and pick one and go C. Come back here. And if I replace this for 80, it won't work. Okay. I don't have answer why it won't work because this is the public. Uh, IP address of shared load balancer, maybe some some uh, configurations on that uh, uh, shared load balancer. Okay. If I go back, the first one, the first way we can access it via shared load balance, going via shared load balance. Okay. So can we see how this uh, DNS getting resolved? If I go here to my, what's my DNS? Let's see. You can see that where it is going, it's going over here. And then if you go to the A record, the name record and the record, it say it's going over here. Okay. So it's 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 reaching the shared load balancer. And from shared load balancer, it goes to the public mule worker URL. Okay. Public URL of mule worker. So how that URL look like? So same application will try to hit. So we'll add new hyphen worker hyphen. Okay. This will become the public URL of my mule worker. So now we are bypassing our, our shared load balance. So then you need to pass 8081 port number because that port mapping is fixed on SLB. Okay. So now since we are not uh, going via SLB, so we need to tell on which port this application is running. Okay. So via public URL also, we are able to access. Now, can I access? So before that, let me show you the IP address because these applications we have deployed on single worker. So if you go ahead and say, okay, NS lookup and that address you see that it's deployed on only one worker okay so we'll see that we have deployed one app on two worker also right so that time we'll be able to see two um urls okay uh two ip addresses so let me quickly show you that so that app name was right see here Okay, showing three workers. Let me see that exactly. 
setting any point you can go ahead it's running on two workers only okay now yeah, let me see i mean let's uh look at that later but this should show me only two ip addresses actually let's see um okay i gave wrong so it's going on okay it's going on the shared load balancer actually so that's what it should see now this is the ip address public ip address of mule worker if you remember we if you run this till here this is the url of your shared load balancer okay and shared load balancer running on three workers so we have seen application running on one worker, two worker, and the shared load balance is running on three workers. Okay, and all these are public IP addresses. Now let's go ahead and see: Can I access my application via mule worker internal URL? So we need to add internal URL and hide. Okay. So why internal and port number 8081, whether I'll be able to access? No. Answer is no. Okay. So this URL only works within, within my VPC. And that also will work with 8091, not with 8081. Okay. Okay. So we have seen three URLs. Okay. So if I get the mule worker, this one. I'm able to access it right now for this this host if i get the public ip address i'll go ahead and i'll say go here okay it's running on this ip address so if i copy this and paste it here instead in case of this we'll be able to access that application here so we have access via uh, shared load balancer we have access via new public url we have access via public ip address can i access this via dedicated load balancer now okay so let's have a look at our dedicated load balancer url how it looks so if you look at the dedicated uh, load balancer url is this is the name of my dedicated load balancer dlb and this is the url okay so let's copy this and see so just go ahead and paste it here. Now let me trigger. Okay, let me trigger. So first of all, I I am intentionally making two mistakes here. The protocol has to be HTTPS because dedicated load balancer only accept uh, accept the traffic on HTTPS. Second one is this will go and uh, uh, to apply the URL mapping. Okay. And default URL mapping right now, if you go to my dedicated load balancer, the URL mapping, I'll show you. So URL mapping on my, see here, the input path says, okay, look at first for forward slash and whatever is there in between, get that value in app and look for that app, okay, as a target app. So let's try to decode this URL. Okay. The URL which we are using here, let's try to decode. Control C, come back here. So this is the URL we are looking at. Okay. So let's let's try to decode it. Okay. So our input path will look for first forward slash, and after that, there is a hello. So if it is considered app, app equal to hello then there is no app running inside my runtime manager with this name. 
okay with this name which app is running the app with name called app ether this is the name okay so i need to call my url something like this from my postman something like this so after my control d something like i need to call okay so this is this is the right url to invoke so now the app ether will be picked up as a app and then this url so this is a load balancer url okay this will be right url now previous one was wrong now the input part the dlb url mapping we we'll look for this value and app so this will become my app okay rest of the thing we will we'll talk it later but now this url will get mapped to this url okay so new always dlb will try to hit the new worker internal url worker hyphen internal then hyphen app name what is the app name app ether control c control v okay app ether and what is the region dot region that is uh, ap uh, let me see what exactly is the au and as well. let's copy this okay let's see okay and it will try to look for 8099 here is the problem okay because my app is running on rest of the thing will be added as it is and then on which protocol we are sending the traffic on http this is the default now if i go ahead and try to look for this url there is nothing running with this app name and running on 8099 actually this app itself is running on 8081 so that's the reason we are not able to access our app itself from our dlb right now okay that's the problem okay that's the reason we are not able to access it okay okay now let's change our app name now what we have done we have deployed the second app which is app lucy on port number 809 so let's go ahead and just change the name app lucy now change the name okay you will be able to see the output because this guy is running on 809 so now if i go back copy this url and come back here control v now this url will be able to redirect or convert into this url easily because it's running this app is running on so that's it and this is working this is not working okay now let's go ahead and so we we have tried accessing via shared load balancer we have tried accessing via dedicated load balancer now let's try to access via our domain name vanity or instead of this uh, .net or cloudo.io let's try to access via our mulesacademy.com url okay so i'll go ahead here and i'll say i don't want the url something like this i want the url something like dev dot okay dev dot new new s academy dot okay let's go ahead and trigger now see we are able to access via our vanity one so whatever cnm mapping we have done on our dns server that is diverting or redirecting the traffic to our uh, dedicated load balancer from dedicated load balancer it's going to my mule worker and since it is running on 8091 i'm able to access app lucy i won't be able to access app ethel if i go and change this to app ethel because it is running on 8081 it won't work okay so that get be fixed okay so traffic is coming till my my mule workers but nothing is running with this name on 8091 because it's running on 8081 so this app will be accessible only via state load balancer okay okay 
So let's go ahead now and play with. So let me show you something, some more things. So if I go ahead and uh, uh, <clears throat> Okay, I was trying to show you on how many workers this guy is running. Let's now look at it. If you want to justify or verify, okay. So uh, not like this. <clears throat> yes. Okay. You can see that it's running on two workers. Okay. App Lucy is running on two workers. Okay. Now what I wanted to do. Now let's go ahead and try to deploy the um uh, I mean we already deployed it okay so now uh, let's try to access that application which is running on 9000 whether it's possible to access by shared load balancer or a dedicated load balancer let's have a look at it okay so let's copy this okay this is the url we are getting copy this link address go to our control b slash Hello, this is a shared load balancer URL. Why are shared load balancer URL trying to access? No. Okay. 502. Okay. Bad gateway. Can I access via my mule worker by bypassing this guy? Mule hyphen worker directly the public URL of my worker. Colon 9000. 9000. Let's see. Let's have a look at it. It will throw you time out. Okay. Because it's trying to access via mule worker. But who is stopping this guy? Let's have a look at who is stopping this guy. So actually, our firewall rules are stopping this guy. Let's look at our VPC. This guy is deployed under VPC. How we can cross check that? So we can cross check via. Uh, so let me show you how we can cross check all three. Apps are deployed under my VPC or not. That also we can cross check. So if you go here, um, this is our CIDR block, right? This is the CIDR block. Now, all three app internal IP addresses should belong to this. Then only we can say that the app is actually deployed under my VPC. Okay, let's quickly let's quickly see that. Okay. So let's go here and first one we'll see. App ethel, I'll say I'll add internal here. Okay, hyphen. You see that 10.0.3.77. This is coming from my title block. Other app is app Lucy. So you go ahead here. Lucy. Okay. You can see that it's deployed on two workers. Both IP addresses are coming from my title block only. Our dedicated load balancer let's have a look at it okay so this is external uh, or a public url of my dedicated load balancer so definitely it will show you the public address which are not belongs from a title block but if i change the url internal okay which we have already discussed in the last session internal All right. see here this also are coming from my my vpc cider block because this VPC, uh, this BLB, all three apps. Okay, the third app, I didn't check it. So let's go ahead and check that. So the app name is app-9000, right? See here, this is running on one worker and this address also coming from. So all three apps plus my DLB deployed under inside my, my, my uh, title talk. Okay, that's how we can craft it. Now let's quickly jump on what I wanted to do now. Since if you if you see that the time off, okay. So since this port number is not open inside my VPC, so let's go and try to customize our firewall rules. So we are here. Uh, let's go to firewall rule, and I want to add one firewall rule here. Okay. So how it look? So I'll say that uh, let's say TCP uh, from anywhere. I say 9000 and say add to list. Okay, add it and uh, apply the changes. Okay, so I have opened, uh, definitely I can say HTTP.org. I'm uh, uh, opening TCP traffic. Uh, 
uh, any any anywhere on this port number. Okay, apply these changes and see what see whether we'll be able to access or not. Definitely, if this app is running on other than this port, and since these four firewall rules were there, the app which is running on eight nine thousand was not accessible. Okay, so it says that VPC is updated. Let's try to run this again. See now, if the app is running on nine thousand. You cannot access it from SLB. You cannot access from DLB, but you can access it from the Mule Worker public URL. You just need to open that port on on uh, uh, on your uh, firewall rules. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's the one thing. Now, what I'll do is I'll try to uh, deploy. So I say, okay. So let's try to change a little bit. So let's come over here, and now I say uh, this is coming from let's say Dave. I just wanted to just wanted to. Oh, uh, so I say this is coming from Dave. Uh, okay, save this. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll export this. This time it is. I just say uh, detail. Okay. Input everything. Okay. I'll go ahead and now this time. Oh my God. Just a second. I think we need to change the port number. Uh, it will be 8091. Okay. I need to re-export again, export it. So I'm trying to mimic the uh, the two different environments, okay? So dev environments and dev environment, uh, test environment. And we'll try to access it from one DLB, okay? So how that mapping, URL mapping will come into this. So one thing we have deployed it, okay? Now change the message to test. Okay, save this hmm. and export this. This time I say USP. Okay, let it keep, uh, let it. Uh, let's go to application. Now what I'll do, I'll say deploy application and uh, let's select our cloud up. Our region is our Sydney. And I'll say app uh, equal, okay, hyphen date. Okay, and choose application. We'll deploy day work. Okay, so this is getting deployed. Let's let's mimic this. This is getting deployed inside my dev environment. First of the thing, I'll keep it as it is. Let it deploy. Let it deploy. Let's take a little pause over here so that I can give some time to deploy this guy and then I'll go and deploy the. Okay, so meanwhile, okay, it started deploying it. Now I'll deploy other application. So we can do this thing. We can say that uh, uh, this guy. Okay, so only dev and uh, uh, if you hyphen PST and we select Clouder, we we'll select our select the file to send test. Okay. Okay. So let's see 
how one DLB can uh, identify which app I supposed to trigger because it's under same VPC behind same DLB. How DLB will decide I need to call dev app fill or I need to call test app. Okay, so let's let it run both. We'll jump on to the DLB. And on DLB, what we'll do? So let me show you. We'll edit our we'll edit our okay. We'll go to DLB. We'll edit the URL map. Let's go here and now edit this. Okay. Now from there, we'll get this URL, same URL. Okay. So which URL we are triggering it? This URL. Hello. Okay. Uh, not that one. Uh, we'll be having the URL. And we'll go here, this URL. Okay. So now let me put it here. So if I trigger this URL, this guy should go ahead and execute my app Ethel hyphen dev. Okay. And if I trigger this URL, EST, then it should trigger my, from the same DLP, it should trigger this app. Okay, now how, how DLP will decide? DLP will decide based on the URL maps. So let's see now that how we can write this. Okay, so this will be our domain name. And whatever comes in place of star, if you see the SSL certificate, the certificate says star dot mute dot com, right? So we'll write a URL mapping in such a way that this will this will get stored in a variable called subdomain. Okay, automatically subdomain value will come either Dave or ES. Whichever URL we trigger based on that value is changed. And our input path in such a way that input path says that forward slash, then app, then forward slash, right? So app will be having app equal to app equal, right? And now I need to set the target app, right? So target app name, target app, I set in this way, okay? Let me show you. So my target app name should be like this. The regular expression app hyphen I will say subdomain. Okay, in this way, if I'm triggering from dev, the app itself hyphen dev will get ex executed. And if I trigger it from test, the app app ethel hyphen test will get it. This we need to add where we need to add it in our URL mapping here. Control A, Control B. Now we can see done editing. Basically, we can test this also. Okay, so let me show you how we can test it. We can paste the URL here. Let me show you. Uh, copy this URL. Whether my URL mapping is working or not, that we can test it here. Okay, so put your URL and the test. It will see that if the URL is getting decoded properly, it will show you which URL mapping from your URL mapping table is matching. See, it's matching. This certificate, then it will trigger hello. Okay, and it's matching this URL. So that means whatever URL mapping we have written, it's working perfectly. So test URL will give you the help. Okay. So let's go ahead and I think uh, apply changes.
Okay, let's go ahead now. Now let's, it's getting changed. So, so let's wait for this. Unless this changes are applied, we won't be able to see that difference. But let's ready with our, <clears throat> let me preserve this and see what we're getting. So DLB is, you know, still busy. Okay, so let's wait for this cancel. Let's wait. So that's the last demo I have for this session. Okay, and I think uh, whatever we have uh, in the agenda, right? I think I have covered those things. So we talked about the domain or vanity URL. We talked about a DLB. We talked about SLB. We talked about public URL of worker. We talked about internal URL of worker, public IPs of worker. We have deployed on 8081, 8091, 9000. We have worked with default URL mapping. Now we have customized it. Now we have updated the firewall rules and we have created the SSL certificates also in this session. It a little lengthy, but I wanted to finish it in one session. So that's the reason I'll be. Okay, let's quickly see whether the things are applied. No, it's taking time. Let's wait for. <clears throat> okay, I. Yeah, we we'll wait for this. Progress. Now you can see that the changes are applied. Let's go to our our postman. So let's try to trigger it this now. It will take you to the dev. So that means it's executing the dev application. Now if I change the subdomain, the same DLB is actually able to identify which application has to be executed. See? So in the same VPC, two applications are deployed with similar name, right? And uh, DLB will decide based on the URL mapping, which app should be executed. Okay. So uh, that's all from this session. Hope you liked it. Uh, hope uh, you will share with your group and you'll find it useful in your day-to-day uh, -day work. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.